thank you for this privilege and this opportunity again to come boldly to your throne grace in order that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Lord, we thank you that you have brought us safely through this day thus far. Thank you that you have kept us and blessed our going out and coming in. Lord, we thank you that you have supplied our every need. And we thank you for all being as well with us as it is right now. Lord, I pray for those who are bereaved. We pray for Sister Amy and her family. We pray for the Hadnock family that you will comfort the both of them and give strength to them. Even now, we pray that you hold them up as only you can in Jesus' name. And now we pray, O oh God, thanking you for all things. We thank you for all your blessings. I want to pray for the sick among us, those who are on our prayer list. We lift them up, even those who, who are on our prayer list uh, that we didn't mention. We pray on their behalf as well, O oh God, because we know you got healing hands and you're able to speak healing in our lives. We pray that you will build us up in your name, help us to do all that we need to do, that we may get strong in you, that we may be strong in you and in the power of your might. Lord, help us to be equipped that we will stand against the wiles of the devil. Help us to stay in your will in Jesus' name. I pray, oh God, for those who are weak, that you will give strength to them somebody's discouraged right now but i know you're able to encourage their heart somebody need reviving i pray oh god that you'll send the revival in jesus name now we pray that you'll speak to us through the power of your word bless us as only you can and help us to open our eyes to see open our understanding that we may understand the scriptures Help us to have open heart to be receptive to your word and that we will rush away and put it into practice. We thank you now and we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I want you to keep in mind before we read our scripture that we look forward to uh, the fifth Sunday in May, the fifth Sunday this month at 10 a.m. We're going to have our parking lot services at First Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, we look forward to that. Our theme is it's time for a comeback. And on the first Sunday in June, I think that date is June the 6th, uh, we will have uh, the re-entrance into our sanctuary, the regathering into our sanctuary on that Sunday as we start coming back to church. Uh, that will be at 1115. Again, our theme is it's time for a comeback. And so we proudly uh, look forward to these two events. Amen. For a few minutes tonight, I want to invite your attention to the first epistle of Peter. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 2. And there I'm going to read verses 1, 2, and 3. Uh, the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, and verses 1, 2, and 3. Uh, over there in the New Testament, uh, 1 Peter, uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter uh, 2 and verses 1, 2, and 3. Amen. Once you have arrived there, these are the words you will find. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisy, and envies and all evil speakings as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious amen amen I'm just gonna use for a subject so that you may grow amen so that you may grow is the subject that i want to use uh, another way to say that in order to grow uh, in order uh, to grow amen this is the one of the epistles that was written by uh, the apostle peter 
this book, uh, both these epistles that have been penned by Peter are powerful and instructive uh, indeed. Um, um, Peter here in the text uh, talks about the need for believers to grow. He's talking about spiritual growth. He's talking about growing in, in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Um, as I look at this text, it's important, uh, my brothers and sisters, that uh, we don't send the wrong message to the world. As believers in Christ, when I look at the text, we don't want to we don't want to send the wrong message to the world. Uh, people need to know and see a difference between sinners and saints. Unfortunately, in many instances, uh, some of us live in such a way where people can't see a difference. But we got to, as believers in Christ Jesus our Lord, we don't want to send the wrong message. We got to live so and conduct ourselves in such a way to where folk will know that there's a difference between a sinner and a saint. Amen. Peter here lets us know that as believers in Christ, we must grow. We must grow uh, in the Lord. We, we, we've got to grow. Uh, first of all, uh, God expects us to grow. It is expected of us to grow uh, in Christ. Uh, uh, it's, it's not enough uh, just to say I'm saved now. But, but, but God wants us to grow. It's, it's mandatory uh, that we grow because God expects us to grow. Amen. We, we can't stay in the emphasis stage, the emphasis stage of our spiritual walk. Uh, we can't stay in the toddler stage. It's important that we, that we grow. The Bible emphasizes uh, the, the need for the child of God to grow. Perhaps this is what the Apostle Paul had in mind in, in his first letter to the church in Corinth in the 13th chapter, which we have called a love chapter. He talks about charity or love. And, and on down in there, in that 13th chapter, he says these words. He said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I, uh, I thought as a child. I understood as a child. But, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. And, 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 and even from that, there's a need for a person to mature. There's a person, there's a need for us as, as Christians to grow up. We, we cannot stay in the immaturity stage. It is expected of us uh, to mature, uh, to grow. Uh, uh, Peter knew that. Uh, he, he understood that is a requirement. Uh, even in his second epistle, he writes, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, and so it is expected of the believer uh, to grow. God is, is, is expecting us uh, to grow. And then uh, Peter was he saw the need to grow because of what he was exposed to. He not only knew that it was expected, but he, but but ex, he was exposed to the point to where he he saw the need to grow. Uh, if anybody knew about that, uh, Peter knew because of some stuff he experienced. You know, things happen in our lives as believers uh, that will expose to us. Uh, the need to grow. We we see, uh, we should see in our own lives that that there's a need for us to grow. The things that you face in life, 
the common daily experiences that you have help you to see where you stand spiritually. The problems that come our way, the tests and trials that we that we experience all has a way of showing us where we are. And in every situation, it helps us to see that there's need for us to grow. None of us have reached the level of perfection. There's room for us to grow and, and, and things happen in your life and in my life uh, reveal uh, where we need to grow. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, think about it. When, uh, when, when we don't, when we don't respond properly to certain situations, that ought to let us know. Hey, I got some more growing to do. Uh, whenever, whenever you you blow your cool or, 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 or blow your top, get mad and don't act right, uh, you settle down and think about it. Wait a minute, I should act it that way. That's 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 another revelation. That hey, look. I got some more growing to do. Yeah. God let things happen in our lives to, uh, to help us to see that, that, that there's need for us to grow. Peter knew that uh, because uh, Peter uh, uh, mentioned that uh, uh, this thing about growing because uh, of his own experiences. Again, my subject is that you may grow. Uh, the, Peter, uh, he thought he had things under control. Uh, Jesus told him before the cock crowed twice, you will deny me thrice. Peter said, not me, Lord. But on that night that Jesus was arrested, uh, Peter followed afar off and he found himself warm and by a fire that had been built by some of the officers in the courtyard. And Peter was challenged. And the way Peter responded let you know that there was some more growing that needed to take place in his life. Uh, what we are exposed to, uh, the, the experiences of life have a way of, of helping us to see the need to grow. That we got some more growing uh, to do. And then uh, Peter says this in the text because there is no excuse for not growing. You know, a lot of times people people have excuses uh, for not being what God requires of us to be. You know, people come up with all kinds of excuses not to grow. You know. Become complacent sometimes with where they are. Uh, I wonder sometimes if a lot of people have come, become comfortable and, and can't grow because all they got and all they're living on is things I used to do. I don't do no more. Places I used to go, I don't go no more. That's fine and good. But the question is, what are you doing now? You understand? Know don't let what you don't do no more cause you to be complacent and content there to where you're not growing. God wants us to grow. All right. And so we can't we can't just use that uh, to, to stay where we are. Uh, people sometimes will blame others uh, for their non growth. You know, some people say, well, if, folk, if church folk would act better, you know, if our church was doing more and all this kind of stuff, you know, those are excuses that won't work. You understand? You can't use, you can't blame somebody. Listen to me. You can't blame somebody as a believer if you have not been growing. Okay. So, 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 so excuses. Uh, and then some people try to justify what they are. Well, I'm just, I'm only human. Uh, you know, I'm just me. I'm just me. I'm, this is just me. I'm going to always be me. But 
as a Christian, as a child of God, as a follower of Jesus Christ, there's a lot about me that needs fixing. And God expects of me to grow and become more like his son. And so Peter says, there's a need for us to grow. Listen, even though we haven't been able to assemble in the sanctuary for over a year, that's no excuse for not growing. Because listen, you know as well as I, as much as important as it is to go to church and to show up at church, just being there don't make you grow. Amen. It's good, but it's not, it's not the main source for your growth. And so as we look at the text briefly, Peter tells us uh, what it takes in order for us to grow. All right, three things. I see, first of all, the favor prompting growth. Uh, notice this, this second chapter began by saying, wherefore? Now, that, that is to carry on what he talked about prior to this first verse. Let me briefly tell you, when you look in chapter 1, verses 23 to 25, you'll see that he talks about how we have been born again. Amen. That's what the verse said. If you look there, he said in verse 23 of chapter 1, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. What does it take to grow? What does it take to grow? You got to be born again. You got to be made alive in Christ. Because I think what sometimes we're looking for somebody to grow that's dead. A person who is spiritually dead can't grow. A person has to be made alive in Christ Jesus. You got to be born again. By the word of God. It takes life. This anything dead will not grow. If, a, if there's life there, there's a possibility that it will grow. And so the favor is to be born again, to be saved. Listen, saved folk are in position to grow. Amen. Amen. So that's the favor. So to be saved and then to have the scripture. Yes. He talks about the grass withers and fades away, but the word of God shall abide forever. That's, we're favored. Listen, we are, we're favored. We are favored. We are favored to grow. We have no excuse for not growing as believers because of the favor we have. We, we have. we have become saved by having accepted Christ in our lives. Therefore, we have the favor that we need to grow. Hey, that's, that's good news. Now listen, nobody can grow apart from Jesus Christ. You cannot grow. You cannot, you cannot grow to be what God would have you to be uh, unless you're in Christ. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. According to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, old things are passed away and all things become new. How? How? So he said, if any man be in Christ, he becomes a new creation. Check it out. Then he said, all things are passed away. All things become new. How? By growing. By growing in Christ Jesus. Okay? That's the favor we have. That's the favor. Because we're saved. We are in Christ. We've been born again. We've been made alive. We are favored. 
to grow. No such thing as I can't grow. I can't grow. I can't grow. Yes, you can. If you have been born again, if you've been made alive in Christ, if the Holy Spirit has come into your heart, and if you accepted Christ, the Holy Spirit has come in, you have the favor that you need in order to grow. Amen. But that's not all I see in the text. The second thing I want to point out is the filth removed for growth. The filth that is removed for growth. Listen to what he says. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all God and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. Listen. He lets me know that as a child of God, there's something else that we got to do so that we can grow. There is some filth that we've got to get rid of. When he uses that word lay aside, uh, the Greek word is apothemenoi. Apothemenoi. And the word literally means to strip. It means to put off one's covering or clothes. It is to rid ourselves of anything that contaminates us. Listen, he said, lay aside. You need to strip. <laughs> we got to be spiritual strippers. We got to let go of some stuff. Check this out. When we came to Jesus, we came as we was. You hear me? And so now that we're in Christ, we got to do some stripping. We got to pull off some stuff. That's why he figures, he talked about uh, put off the old man and put on the new man. You listen to me? He said, wherefore laying aside. I think sometimes a lot of us are sitting around indulging, waiting on God to take away something that he told us to get rid of. And you might be, listen, the devil may have deceived you into thinking that as a saved person that you can't do it. But listen, God's word teaches us that we can. Philippians 4 13 said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Didn't he say it? God has given us what we need to let go of what we need to let go of. Why? Because uh, the Bible says in Ephesians 3 and 20, you know, I must admit, we, we're guilty. I'm, I'm guilty most of the time of just quoting the first half of the verse and not putting emphasis on the last part of the verse. Because Ephesians 3 and 20 said, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. That's the first half of the verse. But we got to get the rest of the verse. The rest of the verse says, According to the power that worketh in us. Did you hear me? There's a power that we have on the inside. John came along and said, Ye are God, little children, have overcome them. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. That means I got power inside of me. And so when the, when the word of God says, wherefore, strip, put off some things in your life. Look at it. He, he, he even lists some of the things that we need to strip that we need to let go of. He, he first of all talks about malice. Malice is ill will and deep uh, uh, rooted feelings, deep seated feelings of anger. Another way of saying this is, is meanness and wickedness. As believers in Christ, he said, you need to let go of that meanness. 
you know, being mean to the point where you want somebody to want something bad to happen to somebody, you know, wish somebody would get sick, you know, wish somebody get run over by a car, that kind of stuff. Wish somebody would die in their sleep. He said, they ought not be found among believers. That's mean. He said, you need to you need to strip from there. You need to let that go. He said, you need to lay it outside. Because that's not you. That's not supposed to be you as a Christian. Amen. But not only that, he, he talks about guile. Guile is acts of deception and being misleading. You know, another way of saying it's being two-faced. It's, 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 it's misleading, folks. Sometimes some of the stuff we say can be misleading. You know, uh, flattery. You know, you walk up to somebody and say, "Oh, child, you know you you're looking good." Well, you know, you know, you know, you don't, you know, you don't mean that. You understand what I'm saying? Flattery. Try, try to. We used to put it this way: burning up somebody. <laughs> you know, just to burn them up. And you know, mama always taught me, say, say, anytime somebody burned up something, they're getting ready to eat it up. Flattery. You know, uh, sometimes people people want to flatter you. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and a lot of times, they're just saying words that they don't mean. Uh, and then, uh, uh, making false promises. Uh, promises that they don't intend to keep. You understand what I'm saying? That's God. All right? Uh, enticing words. Uh, just, 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 just flat out lying. Uh, just entice somebody. You know? God, he said, he said, you need to lay aside the deceit, the deception, the, the two-faced, you know, what I'm saying? Uh, smiling in somebody's face and then Go off and talk about them behind their back. So, you know, you, you can't be two faced. He said, lay that aside. Lay that aside. Another thing he said, lay aside is hypocrisies. The next one is hypocrisies. Uh, that has to do with a person who pretends, and who puts on a show, uh, you know, seeks to portray them to be something that they are not. Hypocrisies. Uh, he said, we need to lay aside. Hypocrisy. We need to quit pretending. Quit, quit playing like you you full of the Holy Ghost. Pre you know, pretending that you full of the Holy Spirit, shouting when you know you're not. You understand what I'm saying? Don't be playing with God. Shouting can be a real experience. It can be a spirit led experience. But don't be playing. Don't be pretending. That's what he's saying. He said, you need to stop stop play acting. Stop pretending. He said, because you send the wrong message. And listen, God knows your heart. God knows when you're doing something you're not real about. And so he said, if you're going to grow, you got to lay that aside. But that's not all. Envies, you know, envies has to do with coveting the possession of others. So much so that you're willing to take it from them. You know, you know, you don't want to have it. You know, and even, listen, even, even, even if they got it, you want to take it from them, even though you, you may not want it. Isn't that some envy? envy. It's, it's kind of what Joseph's brothers did to him. Uh, the writer Luke in the book of Acts said, and, and, and for envy, they took his coat and they sold him to merchants who were passing through. They did it. One of, the, one, of the, one of the things that, that caused him to do was envy. You understand what I'm saying? He said, he said you, you, you know, as, as believers in Christ, we don't have to be envious of anybody and jealous of what others got. You understand what I'm saying? Something wrong with me. If uh, I won't dislike you because you got something I don't have. You know, that's not Christian. You know, I got to be more mature than that. If you're envying somebody, you're not growing. He said, and in order to grow, you got to let that go. You got, you got to let that go. But then he talks about also evil speakings. It is to criticize, to uh, have a judgmental attitude, to backbite, somebody to gossip, 
to condemn and grumble all the time. Always negative. Don't have nothing good to say about nobody. You see, you got to, you got to lay that aside. That, all that, that malice, bitterness, you know, unforgiving, all of that stuff. How can you grow? Holding on to stuff like that. He said, if we're going to grow, we got to lay aside the filth. And listen, these are things that's filthy in God. And there are others. Whatever your filth is, you can't hold on to it and grow. We got to let it go. And this it's a choice. It's a choice you got to don't wait, take time to wait for a feeling. I got to feel like I'm ready to let it go. No, you got to choose. We must choose to let it go. You understand what I'm saying? Look what the verse said. Wherefore, laying aside, which means you, you got the power to do it. You got the power to do it. You just got to choose to do it. Amen. So, that's filthiness removed for growth. But then finally, the very testament again, what does it take to grow? Favor? We favor to grow. Secondly, the filth must be removed to grow. But then third and finally, we need food for growth. Listen to what he says. As newborn babes, Desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby or grow by it. All right. Now, uh, Peter here addresses, first of all, the newborn believers, those who have just been saved. He says, Listen, as newborn babes, you ought to have a desire. For the word of God, for the sincere milk, the unadulterated word of God. He says, as newborn babes, he says, desire. You, there ought to be a longing for the word. This, that's what it takes to grow. We got to want God's word. You understand what I'm saying? Look, he says, there should be a desire. It's, listen, it's a daily desire. You understand what I'm saying? Listen, just like a baby wants milk, a baby will holler and cry to get that milk. Am I right about it? My mind went back when my, when my, when my youngest daughter was a child. <laughs> I never will forget it. She was at the crib. And I didn't, you know, she wasn't talking much. And of course, being at her age, she couldn't, I didn't think she could say words too well. And I didn't, she surprised me. One morning, I'll never forget it. Never forget, she was crying. She wanted some milk. And uh, uh, my wife uh, woke me up and said, baby, you know, would you get us, get us something? I said, well, listen, I'm going to get her a pacifier. So she probably just going to be pacified. So I got up and I said, baby, Shell, call Shell. I said, look here. Daddy's going to give you the pacifier. And I'll never forget what she said to me, crying. I don't want no pacifier. I want milk. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. I didn't know that she had got to what the way she could express her want for milk. That's the that's the most she had ever said. I laughed, my wife laughed, I went and got her milk. And that solved that problem. If you want it, you'll do what it takes to get it. <laughs> he said desire. The sincere milk of the word. There, there ought to be a desire. You ought to want it. In order to grow, you got to want the word of God. Jesus said, man shall not live 
by bread alone, but by every word. You gotta want it. That's the desire for the food. But then he defines it. He says that uh, as newborn babes. Now listen, it is not God's will that we stay in the emphasis stage. But he said, as infants, you got to have the word in order to grow. Everybody, listen, everybody when they got saved started at the same level. We all started out as spiritual babies. You understand? But we all not stay babies. It's, it's sad to say, but it's true. Some folk ain't, have not grown in 30 years. Still babies. You understand what I'm saying? But but you got to grow. Eat the word so you can grow. And notice what he said. It's milk. Now the Bible talks about there is also meat. But then there's milk. You don't skip the milk and go to meat. Every baby starts with milk. But when they cut their teeth. <laughs> and as they grow. They get ready for me. You understand what I'm saying? And so, cutting teeth is not always a simple process. It's not easy. It's not comfortable. That's a struggle that comes with cutting your teeth so you can go to the next level. Amen. And so, he said, as newborn babies desire the sincere milk, the unadulterated word of God, not nothing diluted. You know, uh, not, you know, one thing God teaches us don't do, don't add to the word and don't take from it. But tell it like it is. Teach it as it is. People need to know what the gospel says, what God's word says. You understand what I'm saying? So as newborn babes, he said, desire the sincere milk of the word. Then not only do I see in that the desire for food, the defining of the food, but what's the design of the food, the milk? What's the design of it? Here it is, that ye may grow. <laughs> Look here. In order to grow, I got to, I got to, I got to get the word of God. Every day. You can't, you can't grow if you get the word every once in a while. It's a daily thing. Just like a baby needs milk daily. Are you hearing me? We need God's word daily so that we can grow. Every day, we need to feast on his word so that we can grow. There's some things you'll never get out until you grow out of it. There's some things you'll never understand until you grow. There's some things you'll never be able to say until you grow. There'll be some things you'll never be able to handle until you grow. There's some things you'll never be able to do until you grow. So, so there's a need for us to grow. Amen. God's word is how we grow. So we got the favor for growth. There's the filth that we got to remove to grow. But then there's the food for growth. The word of God. Well, finally, did you see what verse 3 said? Do this, if so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, that the Lord is kind, that the Lord is good. He said, look, if you really know something about his goodness, it ought to be reflected in your spiritual growth. If you've tasted of his goodness, if so be you know that he's gracious, that he's got, that ought to motivate you, that ought to inspire you to grow, to grow and grow and be what the Lord would have you to be. Amen. Because the more you grow, the more we look like we belong to him. The more the world can see a difference. The more of Jesus they can see in our lives. We have to grow. God fixed it. 
in giving his son so that we could be saved and so that we can grow in him, be shaped into his image. And don't let nothing stand in the way of your growing to be what Christ would have you to be. I encourage us, let's eat the word so that we can grow. Father God, thank you. Thank you so much for your word tonight. Thank you for reminding us that it is required of us, it is expected of us. We have all we need so that we can grow and be what you would have us to be. You told us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to help us to grow. We thank you, Lord, and we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.